Hey Guru Nation, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru. Thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed this video, the inner workings of a CRO. Um, I know a lot of you guys were confused out there and as I'm building my CRO this year, but really I've been laying the foundation for the past decade, I'm starting to learn a lot more about the business and I wanted to sort of give you an outline of what some of the components of a CRO are. It was always a goal of mine to start a CRO it's happening this year, but that's after 10 years or longer, probably 11 years at the time of this video in 2016. So hello to those of you watching the future. Um, a lot of infrastructure, and at the time we didn't know we were laying the infrastructure for a CRO, but as I learned more about the CRO business and what exactly a CRO is, and then I met, I networked with many people because of this blog, Thankfully, I get lots of emails and texts, which all of you guys can do, by the way. It's dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com or 949-415-6256. So the more I started networking with other people and the more I started going to conferences and meeting face-to-face -face with some of you, I've learned more about the inner workings of a CRO. And the more I looked into it, the more I studied that business model, the more I realized that, hey, I already have like 80% of this stuff down. And so I started piecing together the different components of what a CRO actually is. And there's, there's so many CROs out there. There's probably dozens of them out there. Uh, in fact, probably more than that. There's probably many like mine, which are super small, super niche. Um, so they may not all apply. To this video but for the most part I'm a big believer in the 80-20 rule for the most part I think this is pretty accurate as far as the majority of CROs and what components they have so let me get right into it I'm gonna give you the inner workings of a CRO and what it consists of right so essentially CROs are organizations that are hired by drug sponsors the drug manufacturers to conduct their clinical trials. And there's full service CROs, which means that they, they will handle the entire, all the aspects of, of, uh, of the clinical trial. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a full service CRO and some of the components of a full service CRO. And yes, I might be missing a couple here or there, but for the most part, this is what a CRO is. And uh, so a sponsor will hire a CRO, then the CRO, they find the sites, the investigative sites, the sites are the ones who actually screen the patients. And then the CRO hires the CRAs. They have medical monitors as well. They have biostatisticians, and I'll get through some of that. And then essentially they handle all the logistics of the trial as well, shipping drug supplies, lab supplies, although there's a lot of vendors that they can outsource all of this to. Remember, anything can be outsourced and just about everything is, okay? So at some of these smaller CROs. Some of the larger ones have actually acquired their former vendors. Uh, and so now they can say that, yeah, they provide this service in-house, when in fact they were using that company as a vendor for all these years while they were accumulating more and more market share and, and having a higher market cap to where they can actually afford to buy some of their vendors. This is called vertical integration. Uh, so that's what a CRO is in a nutshell. So some of the um, things a CRO is responsible for, they're given a study budget. The sponsor is asked the CRO to come up with a budget for the study and also an enrollment target. Okay, So the CRO's job is to make sure that the study finishes on time and on budget, preferably under budget, which by the way, rarely happens. Okay, and we're gonna get into patient recruitment and why this is important. Later, I'll be doing more videos as I'm building my CRO, um, but just to let you know, my CRO, I think we found something in it, and it, the key is the patient recruitment, right? So the uh, patient enrollment, so the CRO is in charge of selecting sites, and then they're in charge of vetting the sites, meaning making sure that these sites are capable of conducting clinical trials. Do they have any experience? But more importantly, do they have the patient population? So many 
clinical trials, in fact, the majority of clinical trials, uh, they go over budget and they get delayed, meaning they're not on time, right? The, the studies take much longer than the sponsor and the CRO initially agreed upon because sites are, are having, usually sites have a hard time enrolling subjects, especially for the more restrictive clinical trials. So some of the services a CRO provides, clinical trial management, right? So they have what's called CTMS systems where they manage all the aspects of the trial. From there you can see which sites have what what screening activity, what recruiting activity, which sites have been paid, what the monitoring plans are for each particular site. And we're gonna get into more of that uh, right now. So risk-based monitoring is another big one and they're using big data. So the CRO is supposed to also keep track of the data in real time. So as research sites are enrolling subjects and entering the data in the EDC systems, which by the way most CROs outsource that to vendors, uh, then they can actually look at the numbers in real time and see which sites need to have uh, which issues addressed and at what time. Okay, That's essentially risk-based monitoring. Also risk-based monitoring is supposed to prevent errors from happening. There's a, there's a bit of a predictive um, there's a bit of a predictive dynamic when it comes to risk-based monitoring where if you aggregate all the data from all the sites you can sort of see what the problems are, what the pain points are for the trial and so for the sites that have not gone through those pain points yet you can kind of anticipate in advance that those pain points might happen and this is all possible because of big data and by the way these CROs out there they don't have their own in-house data team. I mean some do but many outsource this to, to companies like Bioclinica, Drug Dev, things like that. So it, there is a lot of smoke and mirrors going on when a, when a CRO boasts about their capabilities because most of that stuff is outsourced to other vendors. Okay. So there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on. Uh, data management, All right, so EDC, CRF design, the EDC design, which again, the EDC vendors actually do it, but the CRO, Think of the CRO like the PI for a site, right? The CRO can delegate anything it deems necessary to vendors, but at the end of the day, the sponsor is holding the CRO accountable for the study, right? And I've seen, I've participated in many trials where the sponsor switched the CRO on their next trial because, as it turns out, the CRO dropped the ball, okay? Sometimes they do that in the middle of a trial. I've seen that happen too. Statistics, again, usually outsourced, unless you're one of the bigger CROs, in which case you probably acquired one of the vendors you used to work with. Uh, statistical consulting services, um, usually uh, statistical analysis plan, and I'm just going through one of my articles I have here. Medical and scientific writing, again, generally outsourced, but th it's not that hard to hire a medical writer. Uh, in fact, we know many who we work with for our projects. Um, and you can say they're in-house even though they're not your employees. But again, some of the larger CROs will have their own employees that are medical writers. They write the protocol, they help the sponsor write the investigator brochure, and all that that entails, uh, which is a lot of paperwork. Okay? Pharmacovigilance. So, Essentially, pharmacovigilance services overseen by medically qualified personnel who can provide safety oversight for clinical trials, including data safety, monitoring board involvement. So, think of medical monitor, okay? All sites have, or all studies have a medical monitor. The CROs usually employ the medical monitor. And the medical monitor is a physician. They're in charge of safety of the trial, pharmacovigilance. All right, they look at all the safety reports, all the AEs, all the SAEs. They're in communication with the PIs regularly when the PIs, when the investigative site has a patient with an SAE, usually, but sometimes with the AE of significant importance to the sponsor. Uh, and so the medical monitors sort of oversee that. All right, so that's pharmacovigilance. QA and auditing, you got the monitoring. We've talked exhaustively about monitoring. Um, sometimes they do 
when the CRO uh, when the sponsor requests, the CRO will provide an independent auditor to audit the work that the CRO and their CRAs have been doing uh, for the study, right? Uh, then each CRO sort of has a niche for uh, therapeutic indications, although the big ones sort of do it all, but the smaller ones, they have their niches. What I am forgetting is lab shipments, again, outsourced to a lab company that specializes in making sure the sites are receiving their lab kits, making sure the sites are getting resupplied continuously. IVRS, again, outsourced, usually to BioClinic or a different... Uh, different vendors like that. Um, drug shipment, outsourced again. Site payments, typically outsourced again. Uh, these are the things that CROs are in charge of and they're essentially responsible for everything. The sponsor hires a CRO because they don't want to manage the trial. The CROs have better expertise. This is what they do. This is why companies such as CROs exist in the first place is because drug companies their core competencies are creating and designing drugs or products. They're not, their core competency is not handling the clinical trials. And then the drug company's other core competency, their main one, is selling the drugs after the clinical trial process. Right? And another thing I miss is FDA submissions. So usually the CRO will assist the sponsor in the FDA submission. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Um, just wanted to let you know the inner workings of a CRO. And as I'm building my CRO this year, 2016, you're going to start hearing and seeing a lot more videos like this. So let me know if you like it. Thanks a lot, Guru Nation. Hopefully you like this video. Take care.